Meta probably has the most insane research papers that a lot of people sleep on. Especially with the amount of new research directions that has been opened with the DeepSeek paper, there has been an unfathomable amount of papers on thinking models, aka test time compute. Last time, we looked at Huggin, where we have a thinking block that LLM can just repeat to simulate thinking and completely remove the need to generate thinking tokens. We also looked at another paper called Kokona, where we saw a way to make LLMs to think using tokens that are not words to improve the reasoning process. While those designs worked really well, it still doesn't really make sense when a model is primarily trained in words in its most critical learning stage, then suddenly pivot to thinking in abstract ways at the end, right? So before we sprinkle all these fancy ways of thinking on top of a language model, maybe we need to prepare a base model that is not completely language-based and is capable of thinking abstractly end-to-end, -end, which should help to realize the potential of thinking out of the box in a new chain of thought processes proposed in Coconut or Huggin. So this brings us to the new idea proposed back in December 2024 by researchers over at Meta called Large Concept Models. It aims to overcome the limit of language by introducing concept-based models alongside languages. And the goal of that is very clear. Make a model think in abstract ideas instead of only in words. But with the majority of the training data being in text, how can they make that happen? But before we dive into it, with the constant headache of managing countless unique passwords on top of the threat of data breach looming, we already know that using a secure and trustworthy password manager is essential for protecting our digital lives. That's why I'd like to share with you about Proton Pass, which is from the privacy-focused team at Proton, born in Switzerland. Personally, I have already been using Proton because of how easy it is to set up their services that have top-tier security. And Proton Pass is more than a robust password manager. It not only can store your passwords, it can also act as your secure vault for notes, credit cards, and even your personal information that you can now autofill when you buy stuff online. So you can forget retyping your address for the hundredth time without having it stored plainly in your browser. Proton Pass also offers secure logins effortlessly with strong password generation, autofill, and cross-device sync while protecting against phishing. And it can enhance your online privacy using integrated Hide My Mail aliases to shield your real email address during signups, and leverage cutting-edge security like passkey support, an integrated 2FA authenticator, dark web monitoring, and the AI-powered Proton Sentinel for advanced threat detection. What's amazing is that Proton Pass is 100% community funded. This means no VC are involved, ensuring the company remains user focused and privacy first. And the best part is, you can start securing your Proton Pass right now with both free and affordable premium options available. So if you're ready to take control of your passwords and online privacy the easy way, check out Proton Pass using the link down in the description. And thank you, Proton Pass, for sponsoring this video. Anyways, in order to obtain concepts, the solution has actually long existed in front of our eyes. So in the AI research field called mechanistic interpretability, it is trying to understand how AI models organize information internally by looking at its neural network. And one of the ways that researchers came up with to interpret the neural network is by using something called a sparse autoencoder. Technically, the researchers are asking an AI to explain another AI, but what's cool about the setup of SAE is that it only activates a handful of nodes, whereas most of the nodes are active in a typical neural network. This way, researchers can use SAE to read complicated neuron patterns of a bigger model and induce what patterns of the activated neurons are related to a concept. So in Meta's latest LCM research called Coco Mix, they have cleverly incorporated SAE during the training process itself, completely changing the role of SAE from an interpretability tool to a component that guides pre-training. So in addition to the typical pre-training process, SAE now scans the model and learns the concept that the model has, then goes under something called Next Concept Prediction Training. The logic is similar to Next Token Prediction Training, where the AI model will guess what the next concept is, and if the model guesses wrong, it'll look at the correct answer and learn to guess better next time. And after training, concept and token prediction are interleaved where the model predicts both the next token and the next concept simultaneously. The predicted concepts would also directly influence the next token predictions, creating a continuous feedback loop where the model is constantly informed by its understanding of the underlying concept. This results in a coherent output that is conceptually grounded and potentially enables a high highly controllable language generation process. To explain that simply, the traditional way of generating words is kind of like building a house with only bricks. But with Coco Mix, it's like you have a steel beam to help guide and support your bricks better, which makes it have structural integrity so everything looks consistent at the end. So with this setup, it can easily save up to 21.5% of the training tokens to get similar performance compared to the traditional approach, even though you might need more compute for the SAE process. On top of that, it still performs better on benchmarks across different models 
model sizes up to a 1.38 billion parameter model, even though the improvements are definitely quite small. On the other hand, it will be very interesting to see how this method works on tasks that require multilingual or multi-model skills. As now, there is a continuous concept being supplied to the model that can better guide these predictions, which theoretically should work better. But I think the best part is that now there's a concept that can continuously guide the model's output. This can potentially replace text or system instructions that is placed plainly in the context window, so the model cannot easily forget what you instructed it to do 1,000 words ago because the concept will just stick around to guide the next token prediction. The researchers even tested steering the concepts of two different models, and you can see how easily it is to change how the model generates the text response. What's even more fascinating is that this large concept model creates a new way of training models called weak to strong supervision. Since having SAE models to extract the concepts from super large language models is very expensive due to the exponential increase in connection complexity, what they suggested is that you could use the concept from a small model to guide the training of a stronger model and it'll still work really well. You don't need the concepts to be exactly spot on to train a super powerful model. If the large and small model are both trained on the same data, even the concepts from a less sophisticated model would map the data similar enough to guide the bigger model effectively, which makes the idea of large concept models sound incredibly promising for practical applications. I am pretty surprised that Meta is the one that came up with this implementation of SAE instead of Anthropic, since Anthropic has been the one that's knees deep in the SAE research. And I remember they mentioned that they were struggling to find a way to implement SAE to help alignment, so LCM might be the solution. And this pretty straightforward model change, especially in the early model development phase, might be a great stepping stone for improving the effectiveness of test time compute that doesn't use words. And I'll be looking out for this development because I believe this might be the key to strong multimodal reasoning which the field currently fails greatly at. So stay tuned. And if you like today's collection of papers, definitely check out my newsletter where I cover the latest and the juiciest research papers weekly. On the newsletter, I have already wrote a more technical breakdown of Coco Mix, which is Meta's paper that we talked about today. So if you want to learn more about the technical side of things, definitely check it out. And thank you guys for watching. A big shout out to Andrew Laschelius, Chris Ledoux, Degan, News Research, Kanan, Robert Zaviasa, Louis Muck, Ben Shaner, Marcelo Ferraria, Zane Sheep, Poof and Inu, DX Research Group, and many others that support me through Patreon or YouTube. Follow me on Twitter if you haven't, and I'll see y'all in the next one.